Well, hello, humans, hoonigans, and earthlings, whomever you are, and whatever you're doing, and whomever you're doing it with, thanks for joining me for another episode. Today, we're going to talk about the heist Civics from the first Fast and Furious movie. The Honda Civic has been a tuner favorite for decades. If you chose the right model with the right engine and the right modifications, this car was a giant killer at the street races and a showstopper at car shows. When we started with the first Fast and Furious movie, we needed cars that were representative of the tuner scene. And back in the early 2000s, there was no car that better represented the tuner scene than the Honda Civic. You saw these cars everywhere. Therefore, it makes sense that any tuner movie would have to have a Honda Civic in it, right? Fortunately, these cars were relatively inexpensive at the time, and that was good for us when we were making the movie because we were going to need seven of them, and we couldn't afford $20,000 price tags for every car. We ended up purchasing three 1993 Civics, two 1994s, and one 1995. Two of them were EXs, the rest of them were DXs. Two of these cars were manual transmissions, and all the rest were automatic transmissions. At least one of the cars had a factory installed sunroof. We put a sunroof in another car, and the rest we faked. We worked on a very tight budget for this movie, so we weren't going to spend a lot of money on parts for these cars. As such, the builds would have to be relatively simple. Each of the cars cost us between $8,500 and $10,400 for complete cars, which was a lot of money back then compared to what they're selling for today, but it was, it was within our budget. The producers basically viewed these cars as disposable because we really intended for the cars to be write-offs when we were done. Given the action sequence that they were going to see, it would be no surprise to us if none of the cars survived the filming. As such, the parts list was really short. The cars received the VIS Bomber GT body kit, mainly because the producers wanted the front of the cars to look menacing. Like most Hollywood villain cars, they were all painted black. We used Axis Neo 7 wheels in gold because that's what we could get cheap or for free. In fact, when I called James Chen over at Axis Wheels, I asked for his help on getting some affordable wheels. His reply was, I have a container full of gold wheels that no one seems to want so I can let you have them cheap. And so we took them. With the body kits and wheels installed, we added only a $50 eBay muffler to the cars since the engine sounds were going to be dubbed in anyway. That's right, folks. The engine sounds that you heard from the Honda Civics were not of the actual Civics that we used in the movie, and they were taken from other cars and then edited in post-production. I know that's a big disappointment to some people who always assumed that these cars had crazy modified motors, but it just wasn't the case. The cars did, however, get the obligatory neon lights. A MIG rig version of this car was built, and anytime you've seen close-ups of an actor in the car driving, it's usually the MIG rig car. The MIG rig car, for people who forget, was basically a shell that we had taken all the running gear out of, mounted on a platform on the back of a truck that was custom modified so that we could mount cameras to it and lights and so forth. And so the, all the actors had to do is pretend they were driving by turning the steering wheel to follow the actions of the MIC rig driver and voila, when it was all edited together, you never knew the difference. There are two big scenes with these cars. The first one we all remember and the now famous heist scene is a memory we will never forget. The first heist was filmed in the Long Beach area. The tractor trailer we used had its trailer raised 18 inches to allow the Civic to pass underneath it. Of course, we had neglected to measure the height of the trailer and the height of the car, so we didn't know that the Civic was actually going to clear the underside of the trailer until we actually brought it out on set and paired the two up. And that was a bit scary, but not uncommon. All of the cars were driven by stunt drivers, of course, and the scene was carefully choreographed. The next big scene was out in the desert near Hemet, California. This hijacking sequence was going to be much more complex. Just as before, there's a lot of cat and mouse with the trailer, then a Civic passed under the trailer, and eventually Letty flips her Civic. If you watch the scene in slow motion, you can see the full stunt cage inside the car, as well as some of the original white paint. Although these cars didn't get the same love as some of the other movie cars, they forever cemented their place in the annals of tuner history. So what happened to these cars? After the first movie, the cars were stored in a warehouse for about a year and a half. When we started filming Too Fast, Too Furious, we reused six of them. Each of them were repainted and they all got new body kits and new wheels. After the movie, they went back into storage for a few years until they were auctioned off. Prices for these cars ranged from about $1,000 to $3,000 at auction. What's sad is that the people who bought them at auction probably didn't care much about them being used in the movie and have yet to see any of these cars resurface in movie condition. So while these cars will live on in the hearts and minds of so many, we may never see any of them in their former glory again. The good news is that these cars are among the most replicated in the world. Other than the wheels, which are basically impossible to find, you can still find the body kits online. Because of this, people from around the world have built their own versions to keep the memories alive. Here's some footage 
of the cars in different stages of development. They were all painted their own different color and they were all used by stunt drivers in the warehouse escape scene. So the cars did work on camera again. And then of course after that they went to auction. They sold for about $1,000 to $3,000 a piece. Most of the people who bought these cars didn't really care about the movies. It wasn't very, those movies were not very popular with tuners in the mid 2000s here in the United States. So presumably those cars wound up you know, being sold two, three, four, five times and then eventually junked. So those cars don't exist anymore, unfortunately, but they live on in our memories for the rest of our lives, right? Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll catch you next week.